Okay, now after that, what I'd like to talk a little bit about here is um, how to do something with conservation of charge, right? I mean, we're, we've just seen what the conservation of charge is. It'd be nice to do something with it. Um, and so let's look at, um, let, yeah, let's look at this. Um, let's say I've got an alpha particle, which is just a helium nucleus, um, which has, uh, let's say, two protons and two neutrons, and that's about it. That's how you make your helium nucleus if you're doing it from a recipe, right? Um, that's a helium two plus. Uh, not many people make helium nuclei from recipes, by the way. Um, in fact, if you know one, send him over to me. Uh, he's uh, probably a very good physicist and has a very, very big reactor. Um, and we want to find out the charge to mass ratio of this uh, alpha particle in terms of the um, charge to mass ratio of a beta particle, which is just an electron. Okay, these are, these are uh, basically radiation, right? When you get um, radiation, you get alpha particles, beta particles, gamma particles. Gamma particles are um, photons, gamma particles are light, and you get these guys. Um, this is what happens in radioactivity. Um, so it's a pretty reasonable thing to sort of talk about in uh, this context, right? So that's, that's what I've um, said in um, words. So let's try to narrow that down. So what are we going to need to do? Uh, we're going to need to basically count out up how much charge and how much mass is in each one of these and relate um, whatever's going on to them. Um, there are simpler and more difficult ways to do this uh, let's go about it the simple way this time. So, uh, my failed attempt last time was with the um, more complicated way. The problem with the more complicated way is it uses more numbers and I don't have a calculator and that gives me a whole bunch of problems when I'm trying to work out things with lots and lots and lots of different numbers. Um, but this, this way that I'm going to show you uses mostly just whole numbers which is beautiful. That's all we want to do. And we want to use the conservation of charge, right? Um, and see how it's a little bit different from the conservation of mass. So um, let's identify the things that we have in the problem. Well, we've got an alpha particle and a beta particle. So we're given an alpha particle. And that alpha particle is what we call a helium nucleus, which is an H E2 plus, if you're symbolized, write it in symbols. Um, and we want to count out the number of different things that give either charge or mass in this um, helium nucleus. Um, and there are basically three things that we've got that can do that. We've got um, protons, we've got neutrons, and we've got electrons, right? So the number of um, protons in this guy is two. The number of neutrons in this guy is two, and the number of electrons in this guy is zero. Okay, pretty good. Uh, and we have a beta particle. Which is said a beta particle is an electron. So now we count out the number of protons, which is zero. None of those guys are running around. Uh, same thing with the neutrons. And we have one little electron all on its own. Okay, so that's our, um, that's our problem. All we need to know is um, something about uh, the charges and the masses, which we can look up in the front of the book. It's just sitting there. It's wonderful stuff. So uh, let's see, what do we want to find? We said we wanted to find Q over M of the alpha particle in terms of Q over M of the beta particle, right? Which is that of the electron, which is a number that we just got uh, in the preceding uh, video. So, we just have to cruise along in here, 
and um, you know figure out how to proceed. What sort of concept should we use? Well, I've already said it. The big thing is conservation of charge or quantization of charge. Um, so let's let's use that quantization of charge. Okay, um, and what's the equation for that? Well, that equation is the charge is equal to the number of um, positively charged things, which in our case is protons, minus the number of negatively charged things times the fundamental charge E, which is the magnitude of the um, charge of the electron. So that's how that quantization of charge works. And that sort of differs from the mass, right? So we're going to use, we need the mass too. Because the mass, we're going to have the number of protons times a mass for a proton. And that proton mass is almost, but not quite, um, the same as the um, neutron mass. So we need a slightly different number for that neutron mass. Uh, plus, um, the number of electrons times the mass of the electron. That's another number that doesn't quite go into these other two numbers. Okay, so um, that's where we're going. Now, before we actually put numbers in, we should also kind of look at this and say, how big is this thing going to be, right? Well, the charge to the mass ratio of a single um, proton should be about 2,000 times the charge to the mass ratio of an electron because, or it should be, it should be one over 2,000. It should be, the electron should be 2,000 times the, that of the hydrogen nucleus. Um, because the uh, charge for a proton and the charge for the electron are approximately um, the same, or, or exactly the same. They're exactly the same. That's what the quantization of charge is. That's why it goes into this equation right here instead of an equation like this one. Um, and then you have uh, two of those. So since you have two of those, um, you're getting to twice um, whatever it was you had before. So we had 2,000, right? So now we're going to move on up to about um, 4,000 times, right? Uh, oh, no, actually it stays 2,000 because we have Q over M twice and we have two Qs and two Ms. And then we have to divide by, um, so it stays around 2,000, but we get basically two more um, Ms. So we have two charges and four masses because these are close enough to each other we can use that as an approximation. It's not exact, but we can use it as an approximation. And um, and so now we're down to something oh, around a thousand or something like that, right? Um, so I guess we just have to keep on going and see what we get. Uh, sounds reasonable to me. Um, so let's see, where do we um, Where do we go from here? Uh, well, we need a strategy, right? So one, well, we better figure out what it is we're going, what we need our mass in terms of, right? So we find Q over M of the electron of the beta particle. Uh, secondly, uh, now we can go ahead and we can find um, Q over M of the alpha particle, uh, but right, right at this point we don't we haven't really um, done the substitutions. So and three we want to uh, do some substitutions. Substitute um, so that this is in terms of that. So that we have the charge the mass ratio of the alpha particle in the same term or as a multiple of charge to mass ratios of the um, beta particle. It should be just be a number and it should be small, right? It should be 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 4, somewhere in that range. 
So our answer, well, first thing we do is we find that Q to M ratio of the beta particle. So I guess the first thing for finding the Q to M ratio of the beta particle is to find Q using this equation. So we come over here, we say our Q is equal to the number of protons, which is zero, minus the number of electrons, which is one, uh, times E, okay? So that's equal to minus E, right? That, that's okay. Um, two, okay, uh, our mass. Our mass is of our electron is equal to uh, the number of protons, which is zero times the mass of the proton, times the number of the neutrons, which is zero times the mass of the neutron, plus the number of electrons, one times the mass of the electron. So it's just the mass of the electron, right? Um, and that means that our Q to M ratio of the beta particle is equal to um, E over ME, E over M. Um, it's a very important number uh, experimentally. And, um, and so what you did what you did in the, uh, or what we did in the previous um, example, or in the previous video, and what you do in your homework, uh, you should keep that in mind. You should have some idea of how large that is. Um, and again, uh, this is going to show up over and over again, this idea of the charge to mass ratio. I'm going to make it show up over and over again throughout the course of the semester. Um, so, uh, then we have to do the same thing for this alpha particle. So, in that case, Q is equal to the number of protons in the alpha particle, which is 2, minus the number of electrons, which is 0, which it gives us 2E, right? And then we have the um, mass of the um, nucleus, which we're going to say is equal to um, the number of protons, which is two times the mass of the proton, plus the number of neutrons, which is two times the mass of the neutron, plus the number of electrons times the mass of the electrons. So we have zero times me because it's a nucleus and doesn't doesn't a nuclei don't have the electrons. Yeah, they don't usually have the electrons for reals. All right. So that's equal to two times the mass of the proton plus the mass of the neutron, right? Um, which means, uh, let's see, how much room does that show up on the screen? Okay, let's go down. Three, that means the mass, or the ch charge to mass ratio of our alpha particle is equal to two E over um, two times M plus MP plus MN, which means that it's just the charge of the electron divided by the sum of the mass of a proton and the mass of a neutron. Okay. Um, so three, we do some substitutions to figure out what's going on. Okay, so again, we have Q over M of our alpha particle is equal to E over MP plus MN. Um, now we are allowed to multiply by one, right? We're always allowed to do that. So we can multiply by this divided by that, and that's one, right? So um, ME, so to do that we go ME over E times Q over M of the um, beta particle. Seems simple enough. Um, and so it turns out that these E's cancel and we're just left with the mass of the electron over the mass of the proton plus the mass of the neutron times our ratio for the electron. And then we multiply, um, or now we substitute that, that in. So I'm going to use atomic mass units because um, it has nice simple numbers for me. Uh, so we have uh, 5.485 times 10 to the minus 4. That's one half of one one thousandth. 
um, atomic mass units all over, so that's for your electron, for your proton that number is 1.007 atomic mass units plus, yeah, I don't need the parentheses, times 1.008 atomic mass units. Um, and then again, we keep on going with our charge to mass ratio of the beta particle. Right? And that's going to give us um, more or less our answer, which is 2.72 times 10 to the minus 4 times the charge to mass ratio of the beta particle of the electron. Okay, and that looks pretty good, right? We said at the beginning, we said at the beginning that um, the ratio of Q over M of the alpha particle to Q over M of the beta particle should be small. In fact, we said it was somewhere between 10 to the minus um, 3 and 10 to the minus um, 10 to the minus 3 and 10 to the minus uh, Four, so we're we're doing good. Um, okay, so that means there that this is okay. That's that's a check mark. Okay, and I mean, what's one over this number, right? That's a pretty interesting question, right? Well, I think it's an interesting question, right? And um, that's equal to something like, oh, let's give it 3,676, right? Which is approximately um, well, it's approximately the mass of one proton and one neutron divided by by that. So one proton is about two thousand times as large as the, or two times as massive, two thousand times as massive as the electron, which is the same for the um, neutron, right? So we have two thousand plus two thousand, which is four thousand, which is about what we wanted, right? So we're doing good. Okay, so if it's four thousand. So um, everything's good. I, I hope you have a good time doing tonight, whatever it is you're going to do tonight, and I will talk to you later.